Hi everyone, it's Amanda here at Spineless Books, your one-stop shop for all things audiobook. And today I'm going to be sharing with you a fairly controversial list of my bottom 10 books this year. Now this year I read over 106 books and that was like 1,100 hours of audiobook listening, and some of these just didn't connect for me. Now, if I name a book that you felt like you really loved, instead of fighting me, tell me why in the comments, because I'm open to changing my mind, and you should be too. All right, let's get started. I saw this book on a lot of people's top 10 lists, and honestly, it just didn't land for me. But that's Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Now, I know, I know, epic thriller, really amazing, but I have to be honest, I guessed the plot from early on in the book and it just didn't grab me. Now, maybe I'm just not a thriller person, I don't know. I have read some great thrillers that I feel like carry me all the way through, but this was a book that honestly, pretty much right away I was like, oh, well that's what's gonna happen. And it took me out of it. So if you loved it, please let me know what you loved about it. But honestly, this one for me just didn't hit. All right, in the ninth spot, is This Other Eden by Paul Harding. Now, Paul Harding has won a Pulitzer Prize, so immediately I assume, wow, I'll probably love this book. But here's the truth. I hated it. I couldn't get into it. It didn't do anything to grab me. I didn't care about anyone. And I feel like I've read other books this year that did exactly what this book was trying to do, but did it way better. Heaven and Earth Grocery Store, The Covenant of Water, epic sweeping tales of a culture or a place, and honestly, this one just didn't do it for me. In our eight spot is another fan favorite, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I just couldn't do it. I think I have learned about myself that I'm not a fan of books where there's multiple examples of the same thing when I can see where the examples are going. Another book I would put in that category is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Once I see what the examples are trying to do, I just want to move on with the book. And I found The Midnight Library was very repetitive and very slow, and I really just wanted to skip to the end. I didn't, but... I, it really wasn't for me, honestly. And if you love it, I get it, but I just didn't find I needed the entire novel to get the point of the novel. In the number seven spot is a book that you've probably never heard of, and for good reason. It's called Moby Duck. Actually, let me read you the full title. Moby Duck, the true story of 28,800 bath toys lost at sea, and of the beachcombers, oceanographers, environmentalists, and fools, including the author who went in search of them. This book was not good. It was not really about what the title suggests. It was not really interesting. It was essentially about a man going on a midlife crisis journey, wanting to investigate how the shipping industry works, and it was pretty dull. I felt bad for his wife the entire time. I kept wondering how she was allowing these massive ocean journeys to happen. Um, and just to give you an example, in my book club, there were about 20 of us who agreed to read this book, and I was one of two people who finished it. So, sorry, Donovan Han, Moby Duck sucked. The Sixth Spot belongs to a book by Jonas Jonasson, the 100-year-old man who climbed out the window and disappeared. I had such high hopes for this book. I was so excited by this book. The beginning of this book was so wonderful and actually laugh out loud funny. And then it fell off the cliff. So I don't know what happened here. I don't know if we had a great spark of an idea and we just couldn't execute it, Jonas Jonasson. But this book for me was such a dud. I was so happy at the beginning of the book. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, this is not good anymore. And it really never picked back up. I mean, it was, it was kind of sad, but maybe it should have been a short story. Spot five is a similar book in that it's about an old man, but a man called Ova, or you might know the movie version, A Man Called Otto with Tom Hanks. This was written by Frederick Backman. I kind of, like, I have to be honest. I love the story. The story was very sweet. It was very cute. I get why they made it a movie. What really ruined this book for me was the writing. 
After a little while, I started feeling like I was listening to C-Spot run. Ova goes over here. Ova looks at the doorknob. Ova turns the doorknob. Ova opens the door. It got so dull. The structure of the sentences was just infuriating. And it's too bad because it really was a cute story, but I have to tell you this one just made me mad. The fourth book is a book called The Magnificent Lives of Marjorie Post by Alison Pataki. So mad at this book. First of all, She's not a good writer. I'm sorry, maybe her other books are better, but this book was not well written. There was a lot of repetitive adjectives and vocabulary. It just got me a little, like the word tousled appeared way too many times for something that was supposed to be a historical fiction biography. Um, Marjorie Post, if you're not familiar, was the daughter of Dr. Post who invented Post Cereal and General Mills Foods and all of those companies. She's actually a hugely influential woman she was responsible essentially for the, the age of refrigeration and processed food. So you can thank her for all of our weight gain. But she was very accomplished. She was a huge philanthropist. But this book instead chose to focus on her many husbands. So this was more like the many husbands of Marjorie Post. And honestly, I didn't really care that much about that part. And I get it that women didn't really have a ton of power when she was around. But at the same time, she was so accomplished. And this book just totally glazed over all of the things that made Marjorie Post important. So sorry, Alison Pataki. Now we're in the top three of my most hated books. So this next one, I know a lot of people loved. I know it. I'm sorry. But I just couldn't get behind. This is how you lose the time war. It was dull. It took a long time to even understand what was going on. And then once I figured out what was going on, I didn't care. If this book were longer, I probably would have had to not finish it. But unfortunately, it was short, so that meant I could stick with it. But I really, I didn't see the beauty in this one that a lot of people have talked about. So if you can tell me why you loved it, I'd appreciate it, because this is one I just feel like I missed something. It never grabbed me, like not at any point. Sorry. Coming in at number two, this one won the National Book Award. It's called Blackouts by Justin Torres. Now, it's really a book about the erased history of gay lives. And effectively, the whole book is a conversation between an older gay man and a younger gay man. Now, I don't have an issue with the subject matter, but I have to tell you, the dialogue was just boring. I didn't care. I didn't really feel like I knew the characters well enough. It was like one is dying, one is not. That was really all of their attributes. The The audiobook was well done in that it was narrated between two different people, but it really just felt hoity-toity to me, I guess. And I wasn't that interested in it. So I stuck with it. I finished it to the end. It won a National Book Award, so I figured I should give it a try. But honestly... Not for me. You ready for the top spot? The absolute worst audiobook I listened to this year. This one had me pulling my hair out, screaming at the book. I was so mad at how stupid the main character was, and I just couldn't imagine that this was in any way a popular book. But it was. We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I know a lot of people love this book, but it was so dumb to me. The main character was just annoying. I didn't care about her. I wasn't thrilled by the big twist. I didn't see it coming, but honestly, I was so checked out at that point in the book, I didn't even care couldn't wait for it to end. I remember I was cleaning while I was listening to this book and I actually, it kind of turned into rage cleaning. So maybe it's a great book and I'm just not looking at it the right way, but man, We Were Liars, I thought was terrible. Could not wait to finish it. Now, when I don't like an audiobook, honestly, I'll speed it up. This book got so fast, I actually had to slow down because I was like, wait a minute, if I'm going to really say I read this, I should probably hear all of the words. But I really got upset with it. I really got annoyed at it. 
And I was very disappointed because I knew it was a popular story, but We Were Liars just did not do it for me. If you liked it, though, tell me why. I mean, were you surprised by the twist? Did you feel like the character was relatable? I don't know. Maybe it's because I work with teenagers and I feel like I'm very aware of their world and how they use their voices and this just didn't feel legit to me. Could be that. I'm not sure. But let me know why you liked it. All right, so there you have it, the bottom 10. If I mention something you love, please do let me know in the comments why. I'm really curious, and I am, like I said, open to changing my mind. So I appreciate you watching, and I hope you like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.